Most people think their Wi-Fi is safe just because it has a password. Let me tell you something, it's really not. If that password is weak and someone knows what they're doing, your network is basically wide open. They can break in, steal your bandwidth, spy on your devices, even launch attacks all from inside your own network. So today I'm going to show you exactly how Wi-Fi password hacking works step by step. Because if you don't understand how the attack works, you can't defend against it. But wait, before I start, I want to use this opportunity to tell you that there's so much I can't share on YouTube. Whether it's because of platform rules or because some skills need deeper hands-on explanations. Many of my videos got deleted and that's why I created a policy point learning community for you. A place where I can share everything. When you join, you're not just getting another course, you're getting access to complete ethical hacking guides, the tools and techniques I wish someone had handed me when I was starting out. And here's the kicker. This is the stuff I don't teach on here. No watered down content, no clickbait, just raw, actionable knowledge. On top of that, you'll join an exclusive community on Discord. I pinned the link in the comments section below, but it's not for everyone. The link is only available for those who are serious about the journey. Now, before we crack anything, we need to understand what we're actually going after. Not all Wi-Fi networks are built the same. Some are easy to break into, others are tougher. It all depends on the type of security the router is using. So before we actually hack into a Wi-Fi network, let's quickly break down the types of Wi-Fi security you'll run into in the world. And and which ones are really worth your time. First up, we've got WEP. This is the ancient wireless security method. Weak and outdated. You can think of this like putting a lock on your front door, but it is made out of Legos. This can be cracked in seconds using basic tools, and if you see a WEP network today, it's basically free real estate. Second is WPA. This came right after WEP and tried to patch some of its flaws. It's slightly better, but it still has well-known vulnerabilities. It's not super common anymore, but if you do run into it, it's definitely easily breakable. Lastly, we have WPA2. This is the one you'll see the most out in the world. It's the default on most modern routers, and it uses stronger encryption and better overall protection. But the catch is that it's only really secure if the password is strong. If someone sets their password to password 123, WPA2 might as well be wide open. This is where most real-world Wi-Fi hacking happens, and it's exactly what we're mainly going to focus on this video as well. Finally, we also have 3. This is the newest and most secure option out there, and it uses more advanced encryption and a better key exchange process, which makes this whole handshake capturing much, much harder. There is still a problem with this because not every device or router supports WPA3 yet. So while it's growing, a huge chunk of networks are still stuck on WPA2 and that's what attackers are commonly targeting. Before we start doing anything, we need three things. The right hardware, the right tools, and the right word list. First, for the hardware, you'll need a wireless adapter that supports monitor mode and packet injection. Now, the monitor mode lets you listen to all the wireless traffic around you, and not just what's meant for your device, and packet injection lets you actively send packets like the authentication signals. Some built-in Wi-Fi cards support these features, but not all of them do, so you need to verify before wasting your time and to check if your adapter supports monitor mode, you can run this command here I list. This command will list your wireless capabilities and when you run it, you're going to want to look under the supported interface mode section. And if you see a monitor listed there, it means your adapter can be switched into monitor mode. Now, to test for injection support, you can use a tool called AirPlay. If you run this command here, AirPlay, Nung tests, followed by the wireless interface you have, this command will send out test packets to check if the adapter can inject them into the air and then listens to see if any responses come back. If responses are received, it will say something like injection is working. Now, once you have the right hardware, the next step is having the right tools for basic wife hacking. We'll be using tools from the aircracking suite like Aerodump Tool, which is used for scanning and capturing handshakes, the Replay Tool, which is used for kicking clients off networks, and finally, the Aircrack Tool, which is used for cracking passwords offline. Now, having the right wear and tools is only half the game because without a solid worthless, you're basically shooting in the dark and a good worthless massively boosts your chances of cracking cracking the password. If the password is something like I love pizza, it'll be cracked in seconds. Because these kinds of easily guessable passwords are in every major word list, and tools we use today can run millions of guesses per second with the right hardware. Every time a device connects to a WPA2 protected Wi-Fi network, whether that's your phone, your laptop, whatever, the router and the device perform a quick handshake to authenticate each other and securely agree on encryption keys. And if we can capture that handshake, we can then try to crack it offline using a word list. Now, we don't need to be connected, we just need to catch the handshake while it happens. Now, to see other wireless traffic around us, we need to switch our wireless adapter from managed mode, which is what we normally use to monitor mode. And to do this, all you have to do is to use the Airman Ng tool. So, if you run sudo airman ng start followed by your wireless adapter name, and you can check 
select the wireless adapter name with IPA command. This command will simply change your adapter's mode to monitor mode. And keep in mind if you see any warning about network manager or other processes interfering, you can always kill them with this command. Here, sudo airmon nung check kill. This command will simply prevent packet interference with your Wi-Fi adapter, but it will likely disable your internet until you restart those processes or reboot after you put your adapter in monitor mode. You can then start scanning the radio waves and see what networks are around you. And to do this, you're going to use the arrow dump nung tool. Now, if you run arrow dump eng followed by your wireless interface name, this will open a live feed of every Wi-Fi network in range, and it's going to be full of valuable information like the name of the network, MAC addresses of the routers, the channels, signal strength, encryption type, and much more. Here, what we're going to be looking for is going to be a WPA2 secured network, ideally at least one client connected to the network, and a strong enough signal which can be anything above minus 60. Once you guide your eyes on a target, you will want to isolate and monitor just that network to keep the capture file clean. And in this case, we will only focus on this network right here called the juice shot. To only monitor this network, we can craft a command using the error dump tool. We will need to specify the MAC address of the access point, the channel it is running, and finally write all the packets coming into this network. Like the handshakes, we are interested in a file called capture.cap. So the command will look like this arrow dump nung dash bssid followed by the MAC address of the router or the access point dash c followed by the channel. This network is on dash w followed by the output file. And finally we specify the name of the wireless interface after typing this command. Now you'll only see your target network and if any clients are already connected to this network you will see them under the station section. We will have to keep capturing these packets until we finally grab a handshake out of the air. Alright now we wait for a handshake but here's the problem. What if no one connects to this network? What if the clients just stay connected or there is no new connection happening? We don't want to just sit there hoping someone will finally connect. We can actually force this process. If there's already a device connected to the network, we can run an authentication attack to kick that client off the network and the moment they reconnect, the handshake will be captured. And to do this, you need to open a second terminal window while still keeping this error dump terminal open. And in the second terminal, we will use a replay ending tool to run this command. A replay nung dash D authentication and then we will specify the packet numbers we want to send. Afterwards, we specify the MAC address of the access point with a dash flag, and then finally our wireless interface name. Once you run this command and go back to your air dump window, you'll now see that you might have a message that says something like WPA handshake, followed by the MAC address of the access point. And this just means that you just capture the handshake even when the clients were not planning to reconnect. Now the capture file we specified earlier will contain the encrypted handshake data. Now that we got our handshake, it's now time to crack it. Now, what we're going to do is to take that capture file that contains the encrypted handshake and feed it into a cracking tool that tries different passwords until one of them matches. <laughs> and to crack the handshake, we will run a command that looks like this. Here, the dash W points to your word list. And in this case, we use the famous RockU word list, which has millions of words in it. And finally, we specify the capture file, which is the file where our handshake is saved. When we run this command, Aircrack takes each word from the RockU list and encrypts it the same way WPA2 does, and compares those results to the captured handshake. If there is a match, then it simply means you got the password 